Tonight we're in for a treat. We've got David Hall. We're going to start this wonderful meeting off tonight. Uh, we're again, we're going to be recording this so everybody is out there. They can have a chance to look at this and see it on QTV. And tonight uh, we have one of the leading experts when it comes to exercise, when it comes to, to the body and, and, and losing weight or aches and pains. And what do you do to get rid of some of these things? We've got an incredible guy here that's going to be joining us that is going to share with us as he's actually worked with doctors himself and his trained doctors on, on how the body reacts to exercise. And, uh, you know, I don't want to take any, any time away, but let's just give David Hall a great warm welcome from all of us at Houston. Thank you. Question. Is there anybody here over seven years old? <laughs> I want you to listen carefully to the question. Is there anybody here over seven years old? The answer is really no. Cells don't get old. They're always replacing themselves, some parts many times over within that seven year period. So really, they don't really get old, but they get weak. And when cells get weak, and there's several reasons for that, then body parts and functions also get weak. But the great news, we can strengthen and improve the efficiency of our cells at any age. When we begin to strengthen and improve the efficiency of our cells, we automatically begin to strengthen and improve the efficiency of our body parts and their functions. I've been teaching a program for many years which I've called Cellology, the seven C's for optimum health, and it's incorporated within Q Sciences. I'm very grateful to be working with a company that is not just about products, it's also about principles and principles of health. And I've often asked the question, what would it mean to you if your body consisted solely of well-adjusted, capable, healthier cells whose ability to carry out their functions was greatly enhanced? How would that make you feel? How would that help you perform? And what quality of life would that allow you to lead now, 10, 20, 50, or even 100 years from now? That's the premise behind the wellness program that Q Sciences offers. And, it, and it's based upon seven steps, which I'm not really going to have a chance to get into today. But I'm going to give you a brief overview. For example, Tony was talking about the importance of minerals. Your cells are like walkie-talkies. They use crystals. Have you ever heard of a crystal walkie-talkie? They use a crystal vibrating at the same frequency. We can communicate with that walkie-talkie or on that signal without any problem. But if you were to take that crystal out of your walkie-talkie and stick another crystal in there, all of a sudden, we can't communicate anymore, can we? Well, your cells are very much like walkie-talkies. They use crystals. We just call them something different. We call them minerals or electrolytes. Those cells have to have those electrolytes at the enzymic level in order to be able to utilize the nutrients. We can be feeding our body all the nutrients we want. If it doesn't have the proper basic ionic minerals, at the enzymic level, it's not going to do us any. We can't utilize the nutrients anyway. Unfortunately, in our processed food diet today, we are not getting enough of the communication devices that the cells have to have to be able to utilize the nutrients or perform their functions efficiently. And one of the great things about Q96 is that it gives the ionic minerals in a way that the cells can utilize them, plus the nutrients so that the cells can utilize them, so the body parts and functions can get stronger. Would you agree? Would you agree with me that your cells? We all started as a single one. I suggest it was an intelligent cell. That cell, better than any doctor or health practitioner, knows how to create, maintain, or heal your body. And when? Would you agree with that? So we need to work with the cells in providing them what they need. Well, part of that is exercise. How many are presently involved with an exercise program? Okay, great. What do you want to accomplish with your exercise program? Get up and move, be able to go. Be able to get up and move, go, okay. Yeah. Who else has something they'd like to accomplish? Well, we have a lot of hands. Yes. Want to lose 20 pounds. Want to lose 20 pounds? How do we lose weight? We either stop eating or we burn calories fast and then we're consuming them, right? I'm going to show you a way, an intense way, a way that you can only do on a particular piece of equipment I'm going to share with you that will utilize and burn calories faster than anything I've ever seen. In fact, I've had to tell my daughter to back off of it. 
because she, she lost about 12 pounds in a month doing my program. Um, we have women who've gotten rid of cellulite in this little bit two to three weeks, so stay tuned. Um, who else has something you want to accomplish? What do you want to accomplish? I don't want to get Alzheimer's. You don't want to get Alzheimer's. Okay, young. Would you, hardening the artery is the number one degenerative disease. We want to open up blood vessels and increase circulation to all areas of the body. That's critical. And we need to make sure that we're eating good, healthy foods and not poisoning our body. And the thieves that would rob these temples of our ability to be able to function effectively are something that we're exposing as well. Who else has something they want to accomplish? That's it? Anybody have knee problems, back problems, shoulder problems, digestion elimination issues? Balance, stress, right. anybody? Yes. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay, I'll yeah. All right. Okay, when I started this program um, in 1989, I actually had a little double chin. I had a little stomach. I was five ten and a half. I'm now five eleven and a quarter. I've been measured by three doctors and one attorney, so I talk about it. Imbibing the disc is something most people don't know how to do. I'm going to show you a way that we open up the vertebrae and increase circulation to the disc, and it's critical. It's very, very important. Um, I don't lift weights. I'm not a bodybuilder. <laughs> I sit behind a desk all day long. Um, every area of my body that you see, though, there, it's, it, it's part of it. I think you know, a, a simple 10-minute-a-day <laughs> routine. I'm 57. I'll be 58 this year. Um, double chin's gone. Stomach's flat. It, it, it changed my entire physique. I was poisoned with a asbestos poisoning many years ago that collapsed the right side of my lymphatic system. It was like a net. I could lift my arm up and it felt like everything was in a chair. I had large lymph nodes. Uh, my skin color changed. My liver was not in good condition. I went to the doctor. I had large lesions coming out of my shoulders, my neck, and my face. Um, I had two children, one on the way, and I didn't know if I'd be around my children, so I did a lot of praying. And, and I believe that if I could live long enough, my body had the ability to repair itself. And it's done a remarkable job. I started teaching my program um, when I was an insurance agent with Mass Mutual Newport Beach, California. And because of what it did to me, people began saying, what are you doing? I was enthusiastic. I started sharing with them. And they started getting results. I was invited to speak before Rotary Club, Lions, Kwanis, Senior Citizen Centers. I did that for about three years, woke up one day and said, why am I selling insurance? And I took it out on the road and reignited an entire industry. Uh, had a yoga instructor come by once and, and she said uh, um, she had grown more in strength and flexibility in six months on my program than she had in 20 years as a yoga instructor. I thought, that's pretty interesting. So I remember that. I was in Austin, Texas one year and now the yoga instructor came by and mentioned it to her and she took offense and she said, she didn't believe me. She said, can you, uh, can you take, I don't know what a lot of this means, but she said, can you take your hand, stick it behind your foot, and stand there like this? I said, like this? She said, yeah. I said, well, yeah, I'll do that. She said, can you take your hand, stick it on the inside of your left foot, and stand there with your right foot over your head like this? I said, like this? She said, yeah. I said, well, I can do that. She said, can you touch your knee to the ground and stand up again? But she wouldn't do it. We were on the cement floor. And I said, I don't know. I'm going to try it. <laughs> so I went down. I said, oh, yeah, I can. They said, okay, my turn. I said, I want you to take your leg. I want you to stick it out in front of me. I want you to sit down to the ground. And I want you to stand up again. She couldn't do it. She became one of my customers. I have had, <laughs> I have had, in, we've got probably 60,000 plus customers out there. People of all kinds of conditions, people who've been in wheelchairs that are walking now, people with multiple sclerosis, fibromyalgia, chronic fatigue syndrome. We've got uh, people, you know, she says, I'm over 50 years of age, but look and feel like I'm 25. And she can't believe it only took 10 minutes a day. Um, tightening and toning the body, muscle building. I, you know, there's, you, you got to read these. Because there's just too many to talk about. Um, Dr. Haynes talks about how it increases the cerebral spinal fluid pumping action created by the spinal joint movement, which is essential to proper brain function and fluid dynamics in the spinal cord. One of the advantages. Um, gentleman here, I often talk about him. Robert Gent was a semi-professional athlete in the 70s, and when I met him, his knees were shot, shoulders were a mess wasn't competing, wasn't able to do any of that. Started to use my program 
three and a half months later, he goes after 15 of games pentathlon, wins first place in all of North America, considered best on the continent, is 60, he leg presses 885 pounds, 60, 885 pounds, writes me a beautiful letter saying, David has been miraculous, a positive influence that my programs had on his body. He said he tried every strength, body stretching routine available, nothing like my program had helped him get his muscle and joint health back. I've got a lady here, Melinda, who called me up, and she said, David, I'll run your, your program now for three and a half weeks. She said, you should have seen me yesterday. I was on top of my rooftop repairing my own shingles, and you should have seen the neighbors. <laughs> you know how old she was? 91 years of age. Oh. Yeah, it's, it's an incredible story. They began in her 80s. By the time she was in her 90s, she was skiing again. She celebrates her birthday at 101 years old, tobogganing. Um, lady here heard me on the radio. <laughs> I'm just saying this because cells don't really get old. They get weak, but we can strengthen them at any age. She hears me on the radio. Uh, calls or didn't call me up. She started using the program. Three and a half months later, called the Seattle Times up. Said you got to get the information out to the public. Seattle Times had no idea what she was talking about. They'd never heard of my program, but they asked her how old she was. She says I'm 94. So they did a article on her. She writes me a letter. She says, David, may I call your attention to the wealth of publicity you might use to enhance your program through this article in the Seattle Times? It expresses how I feel about what it has done for me. I really think it saved my life. After being very ill, I could not seem to get better. It was most discouraging. One evening, your voice came over the radio, telling me about that program. Immediately, I knew it was for me. Uh, she says, there's been so much interest in it since the article was printed that the Seattle Times has had more requests for copies and duplications of that article than of any other article they'd ever printed. So, migraine headaches since 1958. Um, pregnancies, you got to watch out for those because you know, 13 minute delivery, we've had a lot of people who had 10, women who had 10 minute delivery. Um, <laughs> people on Synthroid, they cut them in half. Well, your body functions are working more fluid. They're, they're working more efficiently. Since we're all made up of cells, about 75 trillion of them, doesn't it stand to reason? And again, I'm going to ask, if each one of your cells were stronger, healthier, and worked more efficiently, your body parts and functions would be too. Okay, what I'm about to share with you is not science fiction. This is science fact. But this isn't the exercise of the past. We're going to revolutionize it. I call this the exercise of the future, we just make it available today. This is exercise at the cellular level. Now we've all been exposed to the idea you have to tear down to build up. Have you heard that before? Yes. No pain, no gain. You've got to sweat. <laughs> it means body's overheating, it has nothing to do with the exercise. Um, you've got to uh, um, tear down, okay, tear down to build up. Uh, or you've got to do 20 minutes of aerobics. Do you, do you yourself have watches? Do you think 20 minutes means anything to yourself? It's a great way to wear out tennis shoes and, and, and equipment. But all we need to do is challenge the cells beyond their current capacity. We see these programs that are they're really insane. People are putting their bodies under so much stress or tension. Yes, we can manipulate the body. But it's not necessarily healthy. And I feel a great, uh, many, uh, lots of people that have knee problems, hip problems, because of a lot of the various different exercises that are out there. Um, Typical exercise would tell us that you have to tear down and build up, which obviously we don't need to do. When you apply weight to a muscle, you simply cause the cells of that muscle tissue to expand and contract, expand and contract with weight or stress against the cell membrane over and over. The cell, in response to the increase of weight or stress, simply is going to fortify its membrane with more protein to compensate for the increase of weight. Do you think the cells care where the weight comes from? or how sophisticated the equipment is. See, the fitness industry has a lot of body parts and functions that they can focus on. And as a result of that, we have lots of different types of exercise equipment. But have you ever seen a cat, a dog, or a monkey out there pumping iron <laughs> or weights or doing pull-ups? <laughs> You've got wages of dog boards, roller ski toners, ported by fitness, timers, stair masters, health learners, Nordic traction, air dines, life cycle, life force, semi crunches, thigh masters, ab blasters, solo flex, treadmill, cyclones, body gyms, total gyms, torso trick, low flex, gazelles. The list goes on and on, and as long as we buy into that, we can rest assured every six months or so, the fitness industry will find another way of packaging another piece of exercise equipment just to motivate you to add to an ongoing collection, because that's how they make their money. And yet the principle upon which every single piece of exercise equipment is based is exactly the same. They all work, all of them, by applying weight or stress. 
to a certain part function or muscle group. Well, what if instead of lifting weight away from gravity, we can increase the weight of gravity? Not on one muscle, on every cell membrane, on every muscle, over 100 times a minute, strengthening all of, you, all of your muscles all at the same time. 75 trillion cells flexing instead of a few muscle groups. Reduce body fat. Firm your legs, thighs, hips, buttocks. Strengthen your arms. Increase agility. Improve balance, rhythm, timing, dexterity, and eye coordination. Those are physiological functions. We're not born with them. We can get them in improvement at any age. Provide an aerobic activity for your cardiovascular system. Rejuvenate your body when you're tired. It will go well beyond that. A problem that's being featured more and more now in health magazines, books, and articles as being effective in helping to lower high blood pressure, helping to reverse hardening of the arteries, again, the number one degenerative disease, helping to lower elevated cholesterol and triglyceride levels that stimulates the thyroid, the adrenals, the endocrine system. It helps to detoxify the liver, improve kidney circulation, digestion, elimination processes, the smooth muscles that not nearly enough exercises are dealing with today. Increases oxygen blood flow to the brain, being used by a number of ophthalmologists to help revitalize vision. A program that includes an isometric for toning the body, but it doesn't just do it from the outside in. This does it from the inside out. When muscles get weak, they sag, don't they? What happens to internal organs when they get weak? <laughs> yeah, they, they drop too. I got a lady who wrote a beautiful testimony. She said, David, as I was hitting midlife, I felt like, uh, midlife, I felt like everything was headed south. She says, now that I've been using your program, I felt like everything's headed north again. It works from the inside out. Isometric. Isotonic is weight bearing, but the weight is not limited to certain muscle groups of body parts. It's on the entire muscular skeletal system. How do you get a skin cell to firm up? How do you get a skin cell to do a push up? It's held in place by collagen. It's a protein fiber. How do you get those to firm up? You have to put them under weight. And they respond to the weight by firming up. How do you do that? We're going to show you. It's uh, aerobic for conditioning, it's a flexibility program without ever having to stretch. A program that can be done in just 10 minutes a day in the convenience of your own home, at the office, or while you're traveling. You don't have to change your clothes and you don't have to break out into a sweat in order to enjoy its benefits. Does all that sound too good to be true? Uh, yes. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. And it would be. But by the time you're done, you'll never look at exercise the same way again. That I can pretty much promise you. A basic understanding of how all exercise affects the body will help us to better understand subtle signs. I'd like to propose that the common denominator of all exercise is opposing the gravitational pull of the earth or creating some sort of a resistance. If I were to lie down and do push-ups, what is the force that I have to push away from to lift my body up? Gravity. Thank you. If I'm doing leg lifts, what's the force that I have to use to keep my leg up? Pull-ups, sit-ups, same thing. We can apply the concept of the accepted aerobic activities of walking, jogging, and running. When I take my center of balance, which is right about here, honestly, it used to be a little further forward. But as I move that center of balance forward, I feel the force of gravity pulling down on me, causing me to take a step right out of my nose. We can apply the concept of weightlifting. Weightlifting is simply taking a mass of something and moving it away from gravity over and over. As far as the body is concerned, again, do you think it cares how sophisticated the equipment is? It doesn't matter whether it's connected with pulleys, fulcrums, wheels, arms, cables, chains, or rubber bands. At the end of the cable, the chain, or the rubber band, you still have the weight or the resistance. And it is simply the weight or resistance on the cells over and over that causes the muscles to get bigger and stronger. Swimming is a great exercise, except for the chlorine. <laughs> Yeah. That kills you, just a little bit at a time. But still, what is it that pulls down on the water molecules, creating the density necessary to allow us to move through the water? Gravity. Yeah, participatory meaning. No, it's gravity. It's gravity. So you see the common denominator then of all exercise is opposing the gravitational pull of the earth or creating some sort of a resistance. If that's the case and all I need to do to become stronger is to learn how to stand heavier. Right? <laughs> <laughs> Not exact. But I am going to show you a way that you can stand heavy over 100 times a minute. The key to cell size was given to us as early as 1911 by Albert Einstein. He observed that the human body could not tell the difference between the forces of acceleration, deceleration, and gravity to the body was simply weight. Well, we have a working knowledge of gravity, so let's consider a moment the forces of acceleration and deceleration. And let's admit these forces exist. 
and they have the same effect on virtually anybody because we're all made up of cells and they pretty much adapt the same way when challenged. Anybody have a sports car? Been in a sports car? Yeah. What do you have? There you go. <laughs> that one doesn't count. But <laughs> you've been in an airplane, jet airplane. You feel when they when they hit the uh, throttle, yeah, you're going to feel the weight of that acceleration pushing your body back into the seat, aren't you? That's weight on the body. Okay. When you come around, well, not the jet airplane, but if you're in a car and you come around the corner and you see the deer and you hit the brake or the decelerator, you're going to feel the weight of deceleration causing your body to move forward into the seat felt. That's weight. Now, for whatever reason, the fitness industry has never really harnessed those forces before. The only thing I can figure out is probably due to the fact we generally experience the forces of acceleration and deceleration horizontally, don't we? And most of us aren't going to be going around hitting the gas and the brake over and over to create this weight-bearing exercise. We generally experience the force of gravity vertically. What if we could line the forces of acceleration and deceleration up with gravity and combine three forces working at a cellular level, not just a muscular level? We'd have a whole different methodology of exercise with a lot of implications. All we would need is a piece of equipment that would allow us to harness those forces. And guess what? I just have no problem. <laughs> I call this my portable gym. Notice it is extremely portable. It's designed for that purpose. Somebody wants to ask me, what can I put in the glove compartment of my car? I did a double take. I said, I don't know. How big is your car? And I think you meant the trunk. And yes, it can conveniently fit to a trunk or behind one small bucket seat. I take it with me in the overhead luggage van when I travel internationally with it. This unit has a unique history. I'm not going to go into great detail with it other than to say when I first entered this industry back in the... Uh, late 80s. Every mini trampoline on the market that I had ever seen, and that's kind of what this is, they were using little tube springs that were called rebounders. Have you heard of them? Yeah. Rebounders. Okay. These little tube springs would stretch only a little bit, and at the end of the stretch, they came to an abrupt stop or jar. That jarring effect was so severe to break the spring as well as damage the person using it. My dad was permanently disabled in 1995 attempting to do my exercises on a typical rebound. So in the early 90s, I introduced the barrel spring. It has a larger diameter in the middle of the spring and it gradually tapers, allowing the body to gently decelerate and accelerate through the gradual taper. Well, it wasn't long before the competition started coming out with tapered spring designs. When the steel in the spring is not strong enough. What happens is it can look the same until you stand on it. And then you sink. You just sink. It doesn't have enough resistance or lift to create the pumping actions, which we're going to talk about in just a moment. So what ended up happening is people's feet began pronating. Every time they landed, they pronate. Or they could ro roll on them because of the lack of support or response time. There's a unit out there right now that uses bungee cords. And when bungee cords heat up, they become very sluggish, and they don't, they don't have a real good response, and people's feet pronate. So I wanted to get away from that, so I then <coughs> introduced and patented. This is a patented spring. There are other companies that will say they have something like this, similar. They don't. This is our patented spring. It has a, it's called a triplex spring. It has a larger diameter in the middle of the spring where the spring will stretch from first, and then it has a ridge tier, and then a taper, and another tear and taper. The objective of this spring is to help you accelerate and decelerate irrespective of how much you weigh or how high you are jumping without ever coming to a jarring, jarring effect. Okay, I'm ready to dim or show you that solar side. This is what it looks like. We don't want to confuse it with a toy. It's not. I'll tell you why. Lighting it on the ground, you simply pop it open. In less time than it takes me to put on a pair of running shoes, I am ready to begin cellar sizing. Now this unit's many years old. It's one of the, the originals, and I use it. This is mine, and I, I demonstrate with it, and I show it because I want people to understand how well it holds up. I designed this to last a lifetime. Let me explain why. Number one, this matte material. This is not made out of canvas, nylon, or plastics like you can find on typical rebounders. 
canvas, nylon, and plastic mats look the same until you stand on them. They don't feel the same. Canvas, nylon, and plastic mats have a tendency to stretch, rot, and mildew. When the material itself is stretching with the spring, then your feet proning. They can roll on you. If you are in a compromising position and that happens, that can be damaging. So we use a space-age material made here in the United States. It is a polypropylene where every fiber is put under nearly 200 tons of pressure. It's extremely dense. You can leave it out in the sun, the rain, the snow. It doesn't matter. You'd be resistant. I make it because I don't want it to ever, to ever stretch out. And you won't. You won't stretch it out. You land anywhere on this, even at an angle, it lifts you straight up. If you land on a mat that's going to stretch, some will have a tendency to throw you off. The springs I told you about, they don't connect directly into the frame. We never wear this frame out. I drill 36 holes through the frame, put steel pins through each hole, and connect the strings to the pins. The frame will last virtually forever. The legs don't screw on, because anything that screws on can get stripped, stuck, or lost, be stood over a steel post. So it's held in place by heavy duty piano wire. One of the best wires in the Even the rubber tips on rubber, they're a polymer, they last for years. We've never worn one out. Okay, I'm ready to demonstrate solar size. <coughs> going to change into my solar size outfit. All right. As I stand here, I weigh approximately 160 pounds, or 1 G. That is the weight of gravity. As I start to move just this high, a remarkable thing happens. I no longer weigh 160 pounds at the bottom of the mountain. I now weigh closer to 200 pounds, or 1.25 Gs, just at that height. Anybody know what a G meter is? A G meter. Okay. Measure, measure. Sure. Right? Many of you have one in your own home. Sure. You walk in the bathroom, stand on it, look down at the needle. Some people even call it by name. O G. <laughs> <laughs> it is a G meter. Okay. <laughs> 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 If you were to take that cheat meter or bathroom scale, put it on the solar sizer, and then jump up and down on it, what would happen to the needle on the scale? That it would fluctuate, registering the greatest amount of weight at the bottom of the balance. Well, we know that 160 pounds comes from the weight of gravity. Where is the other 25 percent of additional weight I'm putting on my body coming from? The force. Acceleration. Thank you. The force of acceleration and deceleration. See, as I jump up and come down, I load the springs. That's known as the force of deceleration. The loaded springs then push me back up. That's known as the force of acceleration. Whenever we add the forces of acceleration and deceleration on the same vertical plane as gravity, we end up creating an entirely new G-force that every single cell of our body is constantly being exposed to. So the question then becomes, what happens to the cells of your body when you expose or change the G-forces? Part of that was illustrated nicely by NASA, who discovered when the astronauts are in outer space for just two weeks, they can lose up to 15% of their bone and muscle mass simply because the cells of their body do not have the weight of gravity to contend with. So they atrophy. The proteins in the, the actual cell membrane go right out the body. The minerals in the bones go right out the body. When they're up there for two to three months, when they come down, they're not even allowed to stand up. They're helped out with the structure because the whole body is atrophy. Well, all exercise is trying to reverse that. NASA didn't have time to put weight on various different body parts. What if they missed the part that was important? They had to find a weight-bearing exercise that was on the entire body. It was their research in trampolines in the late 70s that led to the development of the, the solar cycle. Even doctors know bones and muscles heal faster and grow stronger when exposed to some stress. That's the idea behind the walking cat. Well, as I stand here on the solar sizer, and I start to move up and down, how many cells are moving up and down with me? <coughs> there you go, all 75 trillion, very good. Which means, what are those cells going to have to do to compensate for the constant weight that I am putting on them? They're going to have to get stronger. Tell me, do they have a choice? Isn't that exciting? I'm either going to get shorter or I'm going to have to get stronger. <laughs> the physiological implications on the G-forces of the body would take me hours to go through. I want you to think 
what's going on with the thyroid, the adrenals, the endocrine system, the liver, the kidney, the spleen, the gallbladder, the pancreas, the pineal gland, the increase of oxygen blood flow, the lymphatic flow, the circulatory system, the balance and equilibrium, all these physiological functions that are occurring, the ability of the cells to get access to oxygen and nutrients more efficiently, the blood cells, which if you could look at them underneath the microscope when you first wake up in the morning, most people, has a lot to do with diet, will have what's often called sticky blood. The blood cells have a tendency to be sticky. You get on the cellulosizer for a few minutes, three to five minutes, and you look at your blood again, the blood cells are now separated, oxygenated, and energized. They're in a whole different state. We're going to demonstrate what that means in, in just a few moments. All right. So let's talk about three different exercise products. The first is what I call cell aerobics. Nothing magic about the term aerobics. Simply means that all the cells of your body need oxygen in order, in order to convert nutrients into energy. They receive the oxygen from the oxygen delivery system. We call it the cardiovascular pulmonary system. That's made up of your heart, lungs, arteries, capillaries, and veins. So an aerobic exercise is virtually any activity that stimulates the system to more efficient oxygen delivery. Now, most of us know that walking is as good an aerobic exercise as running, and in some respects it's better, but it just takes longer. Would this, therefore, be considered an aerobic exercise right here? And notice the hips are allowed to move down into the mat with the springs instead of hitting a hard surface, so it helps to loosen the lower lumbar. How about this? Does this qualify as an aerobic exercise? You bet. So even if I were blind, I could get all the exercise I needed without running into anything or anybody. <laughs> and Stevie Wonder is one of my customers. Been a wonderful guy, by the way. And if you want to train for a special athletic event, well, there's nothing to stop you from doing this. You do that for a few minutes, you'll have steam coming out of your eyeballs. <laughs> That's the vigorous aerobic activity. But I left a few things out, such as barking dogs, <laughs> rain oh, potholes, rain puddles, uh, curbs, mailboxes, rollerbladers, you can name a few things. <laughs> a study conducted at the University of Utah showed that trampolining helped to eliminate as much as seven eighths of the ballistic impact to your skeletal system compared to running on a hard surface. So we've also helped to eliminate the concerns of ankle problems, knee problems, shin splints, and lower back problems. And we've replaced some of the negatives of aerobic activity with some of the more comfortable elements, such as being home with the family, with the radio on, the television, the air conditioning or the heater, or simply a lock on the door for safety and privacy. And notice, one size fits all feet. So if you're not using it, your spouse can. If they're not, your children can, and ours do. <laughs> and if they're not, grandma, grandma can. Let me ask you an important question. How many people need aerobic activity in their lives? Yeah. How many people need the jar of hitting a hard surface? No. Dr. J.E. Smith is quoted in Dr. Morton Walker's book saying, jogging can kill you. It takes far more out of the body accumulatively than it's ever going to give you richer. Um, okay. The next exercise is what I call the mighty balance. We're building up muscle mass and bone density. We generally think of a strength exercise as a muscular activity, don't we? That's what we've been taught to believe. <laughs> if I wanted to strengthen the bicep, I would do some curls. When you reach a certain plateau, you increase the weight and you maintain the repetition and the muscle gets bigger and stronger. It's happening because they tell you to do it every other day because you're tearing down to build up. And the body needs time to repair itself. It puts the body under a lot more stress. And although it does work, it, it also creates deformities in the muscle, which we think are really kind of neat. Okay. And that's okay. Um, but, <laughs> but if you look at a cat or a dog and you look at their muscle, when their muscles are relaxed, have you ever felt what their muscle feels like? You have to do that sometimes. We have any doctors here? No doctors? Keith. Keith? Oh, have you felt my muscles? Yes. You did? Okay, you felt them. It's weird, isn't it? Yes. Okay. <laughs> no hesitation. <laughs> See, if I tore down the build up, if I lifted weights, it would be a dead giveaway. You would know it. 
Let's do this. I want you to take your fingers. I just want you to, to squeeze my muscle. I want you to feel. <laughs> I want you to feel the muscle. Just feel it. Just stop that. Is that weird? It's just, it's really jello. It is. It's like jello. You can hardly feel the muscle in there. It's weird. But when I try to feel it, I don't want to traumatize it. So it's normal. <laughs> That's the kind of a muscle that is a healthy, flexible, has good coordination, good speed and timing, and un unfortunately with the typical exercise, we have a tendency, as we're tearing down to build up, to compromise ligaments and tendons, which take longer to catch up to the muscle. So I have so many sports athletes today that are ruining their careers because their ligaments and tendons have not had time to catch up to the strength of their muscle. And most of don't even understand what, th what that means. But since Colorcyte is a weight-bearing exercise, and we know that it is. If I were cellular sizing and I wanted to increase the weight to my muscles, to my cells, how could I increase the weight on this body while cellular sizing? They're That's exactly right. Jump higher. See, the higher I jump, the faster I come down, the faster I come down, the more I load the springs. The more I load the springs, the greater the force of deceleration, the greater the force of deceleration, the greater the force of acceleration. You add the increased deceleration with the increased acceleration, all at the bottom of the mouth, you have a whole new G force. Suffice <laughs> 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 that to say, at that height, it went nearly two Gs. That's twice the gravitational force. That means every cell has to adapt by becoming that much stronger. Because it, again, if it didn't, I would eventually get that much shorter. And you see that. When muscles get weak, what happens to people with their shoulders and their bodies and the internal? It, the gravity begins to win out. So it's important that we have strong muscles. But all, it's also important, and I think you'll agree with me, that we have strong and healthy connective tissues, ligaments, tendons, bones, skin, biggest organ of the body. Cellular size helps to increase the weight to every single cell of your body over 100 times a minute, cell by cell. And the cells don't know the difference. It's just weight to the cells. Okay, I've been saving the best for last. It's great to have strong muscles. It's wonderful to have endurance. It's most important we have our health, isn't it? When we have our health, we can pursue our wealth and we can enjoy it. But when we lose our health, we'll expense our wealth trying to get our health back again. We've all known people in that position. That's why I believe what I'm going to share with you right now is not optional. I believe it's essential. And, and if you could just see yourself from the inside after you've done this for a few minutes, and we'll demonstrate in a moment, but, but if you, you would never not wake up to do this. And it's kind of interesting. Have you ever seen a child jumping on a couch or a bed? Are they angry or happy? happy? Aren't they happy? You know, it's funny because when I'm in an audience, often which is a large group, I'll look for the person that's sitting there like this. It's <laughs> usually the, the wife or the husband that's you know brought them in. They don't want to really be there, <laughs> and so I'll look for that person, and I'll encourage the audience to have me have them come on, so I can do a demonstration. And, and nine times out of ten, it works. Uh, by the time I get them on the solar fire, the countenance totally changes. It complete, they're having fun. They're enjoying it. This is fun. We're going to talk about a little bit more about that so in just a moment. When I was younger, I had a daughter who was actually here last week, Jenna, and I was doing my solar sizing, and she was in a crib. And you know what she started doing while I was solar sizing? She started dancing. And I began to think, wow, that's done all over the world. It has nothing to do with culture. It's a natural activity in children. Are they born with balance or rhythm or timing or dexterity or hand eye coordination? No. They're physiological functions. We can lose them at any age. We can also give them back. But if that's what a child does. They stand in the crib and they bounce. Does it end in the crib? No. They get out of the crib, they graduate. Now we're going to jump on. Yeah, it's, they jump on the couch or the bed, don't they? What do we do? Yes, we tell them, get off. I tell people, we knew, if we knew better, not only would we encourage the children to do it, we'd be up there doing it with them. <laughs> Balance, rhythm, timing, and exterior hand-eye coordination. We can, and, and the ability to learn faster, by the way. 
up to 90% of brain activity is being stimulated when you're doing this movement in different movements on a solar substance. That's huge. When you're giving your body the proper nutrients, the proper electrolytes, and then you're stimulating the brain activity, so the brain has to utilize those nutrients, what's that going to mean in your overall ability? But we do. We kick kids off their couches that they dance. Have you ever noticed how young people dance anywhere in the world? <laughs> they get to a certain age, what do they do? They're, I mean, they're bouncing up and down like this when they're young. Yeah. Right? They're bouncing off the walls or on the ground. But we get to a certain age, and what happens? Mm-hmm. Yeah, we stop bouncing up and down, don't we? We begin to live a horizontal existence. Even our, gra- our dance becomes horizontal. And day after day, after year, with gravity always cold in what direction? Is it any wonder then, by the time we hit our mid-30s, everything that used to sit up here now sits down here, we dance. Part of the aging process. We stop bouncing up and down. You know, that's, there's so many other reasons that's important. Hardly of the arteries, the number one degenerative disease. That's something we don't want to have to contend with. Can everybody see the vein here? My arm? Can you see it? No. Okay. All right. I think we're pumping weights, huh? It's kind of hard to miss, David. Yeah, well. <laughs> <laughs> all right. <laughs> if I flex the arm, I want you to look at this. If I flex the arm, the vein doesn't do anything. It just sits there. If I hit it, it just sits there. If I walk around, you can see it. It doesn't do anything. It just sits there. That's our normal day-to-day activity right there. The moment I get on a cellar sizer and I start to move up and down, see if you can see this. Can you see it pumping? There it goes. Can you see that expanding, contracting? Anybody? Yes. Okay. <laughs> I want you to see that because there's one way valves in the circulatory system. And as you jump up and down, you have to back flush the valves and, op- and create pressure, which helps to open up the blood vessels and get rid of trapped blood proteins to open up the circulation and get rid of the cholesterol binding and some of those other issues that can occur within the circulatory systems. So, is that important? Yeah. Okay, there's another reason that's so critically important, and it has to do with the lymphatic system. The lymphatic system is also a circulatory system that keeps you alive and healthy. The lymphatic system works its way throughout your entire body, kind of like the circulatory system, but it's not a closed circuit, it's an open circuit, kind of like the branches of, of an oak tree working their way backwards. Well, the lymphatic system begins with lymphatic terminals. They're located in the toes, the fingertips, and other extremities of the body. They work their way up to other small lymph vessels toward the lymph nodes, where the lymphatic fluid is then cleaned, and the larger lymph vessels, or branches, carry the lymphatic fluid back up toward what's called the thoracic duct, your largest lymph vessel, the trunk of the tree, and into the venous cava area, so what's called the subclavian left vein, or the roots, and then back into the bloodstream, in this case. There's nearly three times as much lymphatic fluid in your body as there are blood cells. So virtually all the cells in your body are surrounded by this fluid. When the lymphatic system is circulating properly, it has the ability to flush or suck out toxins, poisons, and metabolic waste that accumulate within the body, which can lead to stress, distress, breakdown in communication, poor health, pre-aging, degenerative diseases, even death. Everybody know what a lymphocyte is? Yeah, good. I call them your Captain Americas. <laughs> the representative of the 1% of the cells in your body devoted to your civil defense. That's all. They're devoted to keep you alive and healthy. The lymph- lymphatic system or the lymphocytes utilize the lymphatic system to move throughout the body so they can seek and destroy viruses, germs, bacteria, fungus, dead cells, meat cells, cancer cells, and other foreign invaders. Dr. Arthur C. Guyton in his book Medical Physiology points out that if the lymphatic system were to stop circulating for just 24 hours, we wouldn't be here. That's all it would take. Well, if the lymphatic system is not circulating as well as it needs to be, given our current environment conditions we're being exposed to, what are we going to be more prone to? Disease and illness. And according to a number of doctors and lymphologists, if the lymphatic system were circulating as well as it potentially can, it would be almost impossible to get sick. Well, that's quite a claim, but I think we can all agree that it's important we have good lymphatic circulation. Well, all right. We know where the pump is for the cardiopulmonary circulatory system is. 
if we want to have good circulation for the lymphatic system, where's the pump? Yeah, that's right. Both of you are right. The lymphatic system doesn't have a heart to keep it circulating. It is dependent upon pressure changes to cause millions of one-way valves to open and shut. The lymphatic system holds a negative pressure. That's very interesting. Because when you do movement, these one-way valves create a suction. They suck. Well, when you're not moving very much, they don't circulate very well. In fact, Indians used to get to a certain age, and they would go sit in front of a tree and just stop moving. And they pass on. And that's a nice, peaceful way to go. But the lymphatic system would not circulate as well, and the body would accumulate. Toxins and poisons, and just it would pass on. All right. Where's the pump? It doesn't have one. It is dependent upon pressure changes. If you think in terms of millions of one-way valves in the body within the lymphatic system, and you start moving up and down on a cellular cycle with millions of these one-way valves sucking, within just a few minutes, you start to create a, a circuit or movement of fluid that's working through the entire body. <coughs> That starts to, it pulls the circulation between the bones, the joints, and the tissue space of the body. It's a literal vacuum system. I'll wake up in the morning, get on the cell sizer for two to three minutes. I do the gentle baby bounce right here. In that two to three minutes, I'll notice any puffiness around the eyes just disappear. Because I'm getting all the fluid circulating yet. It doesn't circulate too well when we're laying down and not moving too much. So this is my wake up call. How many organs are being massaged when I wake up in the morning? Yeah. Thyroid, adrenal, endocrine system. It's a wake up call for the entire body. Two to three minutes of movement up and down here. Then I do the aerobic exercise. I count to 100. I mean, you can do what you want, but I go from one, two, three, four, five, all the way up to 100. And today I did 120. I, I go about a minute. Dr. Arthur C. Guy says that you can <laughs> run as fast as you can for one minute. You can increase the number of white, active white blood cells in your body by 10 to 15 times. And they say that for up to one hour. That's like one minute for your own natural antibiotic, for your own defense system. After I do the aerobics and I do the calisthenics, when I began, I wanted to flatten the stomach. I wanted to tighten underneath the chin. We have a balance bar that attaches to the unit. Every unit comes with a bar. So you can hold on to the bar. If you tilt backwards a little bit, what do these muscles do? They tighten up. Now with a sit-up, you're just moving your body weight away from gravity and you're limiting the effect only to a small group of muscles right here. But when you cellar size, you tilt backwards and all, all the way up and down the body is tight. That's an isometric for toning. I want to do an isotonic now to build, so I have to increase the weight. How do I do that? Hold on to the balance bar, tilt backwards a little bit, and I just get my legs in front of me. Every time I come down, I'm leveraging the weight right here. That's much more intense than just doing this here. If you want to start off easier, jog with the advantage of the cellular sizer, as you can tell. Now as I come down, all these muscles are constantly tight, and that, that's how I build up those stomach muscles. Um, anybody have love handles? Three of them. <laughs> anybody love them? Why do they call them that? <laughs> all right. I didn't like them either. It took me a while to figure this one out. But, um, you can hold on to the balance bar. From my hips, I just kick out side to side. Every time I come down, I'm putting a lot of weight here. How many other cells are still working? That's unique. See, with most calisthenics, you target one area of the body, then another area, then another area. The entire body is not collectively involved like it is with cellar size. How about uh, lower back and buttocks? It's important to have a strong lower back. And the buttocks, if you know how to lift, tighten, and tone the backside, you can hold on to that balance bar, tilt forward a little bit. And from my hips, again, I just kick behind me. Every time I come down, I'm putting the weight right there. Second most important activity I teach people we do, we want to live a longer, healthier life, we need good digestion elimination processes. We're told up to 80% of Americans are going to have poor digestion elimination. That's serious. We absorb most of our nutrients through the intestines. The intestines in our body are about 10 times our torso length. So 
So those nutrients, they're going to sit there for a while, which means you want to make sure you're getting good nutrients, not bad ones. Um, but since I eat every day, I get on the solar sizer, spread my feet apart, bend the knees slightly, and every day I put my colon, my intestines through a little washing machine. And it's totally changed, totally changed my digestion elimination processes. And it's doing it for people all over the country. As I gently twist, I'm also <coughs> taking every day the liver, kidney, spleen, gallbladder, pancreas, adrenals, stomach, all these internal organs, and I'm gently massaging them. See, when you live a static existence all day long, day after day, you really don't do much. If I take a jar of water with a bunch of dirt clouds in it, and I walk around like this all day long, <laughs> I go to sleep at night, I wake up in the morning, I'm not really doing much. But the moment I move it up and down, I am. That's a whole different dynamic. Okay, so this also helps to loosen the lower back, which feels really good, <laughs> especially when you've been on a long trip or drive or flight. Okay, this one's lateral knee, both sides of the knee. Real important for athletics. And it is well as for all of us. Um, hips. <coughs> you know, what supports your skeletal system? Your vertebrae. Well, what supports the actual? Your yeah, muscles. yes. It can't support itself. It's supported by the ligaments and the tendons and the muscles. So it's important that we have them in very good condition. Very few exercises will work for the lateral knee, both sides of the knee. Very few of them. I do this every day. If I stand on the solar sizer with my feet together and I step across, and then I start to bounce side to side, I'm working the hips, thighs, and knees. As I get stronger, I can sit down a little further and go skiing. It's the same burn that you would feel if you were on the slopes. And that conditions your thighs and your knees. Front part of the knee. You bend in the knee, keep your back straight and your feet flat, and just walk in place. We call this the Jamba Walk. You're pushing down. Your feet aren't even coming up off the mat. Now, if you want to burn calories really, really fast, you want to use the biggest muscles of the body, right? The biggest muscles of the body have the greatest demand to give us the fastest results. And they're located where? Thighs and buttocks. So most aerobic exercises are going to capitalize on that. This is what I call the Jamba Run. You can only do it on a subtle sizer. If you try it anywhere else, it could damage your body. But the springs absorb the tar. In fact, football players do something similar to this, but they cheat. They lean forward. When you lean forward, you take the weight off the thigh. You put it on your back. So by keeping the back straight and the feet flat, you run as fast as you can without lifting your feet up off the mat. You won't last 20 seconds. These muscles will burn up the sugars, the glucose, and the bloodstream, the most readily available energy, very, very quickly. When that's done, um, then it's going to go after the stored calories. That's the white adipose tissue. That's our path. When you're done with the first step, you stand and lift the heels up and down, pumps the calf muscle. Calf muscle helps to improve circulation in the lower extremities. It's often been called the second heart. So as you lift the heels up and down, the calf muscle flexes, it helps feed circulation back up to the heart. Um, so repetitions of this. The women who got rid of their cellulite in two to three weeks, they were doing repetitions of that for nearly 20 minutes a night watching friends on TV. That's insane. That will generate a lot of heat. It increases the circuit. I had a doctor tell me, David, that's so intense, it'll grow new capillaries. Which had to happen in order to get access to the cellulite. Because all that is is fat that you've lost circulation to. It's accumulated in the body. We want to burn it off, we've got to increase circulation. Okay, we're going to demonstrate real quick and we're going to be done, answer some questions. Um, who, is there anybody here who's a dancer, martial artist, yoga instructor? Who? Right, come on. Have we done it? Or do you dance? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Hey. Hey. <laughs> if the light bulb hasn't gone on yet, it's going to now. All right. Uh, what do we do? Great pain. Great pain. Great pain. Nice to meet you. All right, Dane. What I want you to do is spread your feet apart, <coughs> bend the knee a little bit. Okay, that's a horse stance. Okay, strong martial arts stance. Take your hands, put them in front of you like this, your elbows into this side. Okay. 
I'm going to push down on your hands. Dane, I want you to resist me with all the strength you can. And we're going to see how well, how balanced you are, and how well you can resist. This could be interesting. Uh huh. Okay. All right. You ready? Yeah, you resist as I push down. Resist. Okay, try try to resist as hard as you can. Just resist. No 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 opposition. Yeah, no, I want you to oppose me. Yeah. All right, Dave. All right, ready? Okay, you resist. How's that good? Now he's good. You can resist. Right. Ready? Resist. As I push down. You watch how I push. Resist. As I push. Okay. A little little forward. All right. Good. We'll try again. Sure. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna push hard. You can resist. And, and I want you to think of how much strength you're using right now. Okay. Ready? Resist. Push. Good. Okay. It's interesting because he, he, he's altering the center balance a little bit, and he's coming up on his toes, and as I keep pushing, then he comes forward. Come on. Come on up on the solar side of the day. Yeah, she's going to be fine. Okay. That's a thousand of Yeah, she won't mean it. She won't. <laughs> That's good. That's, that's good. <laughs> Now, have you been on a solo session? Yes, I have. I have. We actually have one. So. Wait, you, really? Yeah. Are you using it every day? She is. <laughs> <laughs> because, because if she was using it every day, this wouldn't have worked. <laughs> Watch. I want you to take your hands, put them on your trapezius muscles, hold on to these muscles with okay. your fingertips, grab those muscles. Okay. And if she does it, we ought to do it on her. If you okay. Don't we should. I want you to. I want you to jump and bounce up and down. Just keep going, just like that. A little bit more. Okay, Dane, can you feel those muscles up there expanding and contracting with weight on them? They're moving. Yeah, you're moving. But can you feel them? They're moving. They're moving. <laughs> okay, they are moving. I'm not going to argue. Yeah. <laughs> right. yeah, yeah, they are. Yeah, they are. They're expanding and contracting with weight on them. At that height, it's like Dane taking 5% of his body weight, putting it on top of him. He's doing over 100 of these a minute. But instead of pushing the weight away from gravity, he's increasing the weight of gravity. And it's not just on these muscles. As he decelerates, it's on every single muscle, every single cell. So grab the deltoids, grab the shoulder muscles, squeeze them with your fingertips, and dig into them. Can you feel them expanding and contracting with weight on them? Yes, I can. Quite a bit, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Yeah, you don't get that in your normal day-to-day -day activity. That's a lot. Um, and that helps to open up shoulders as well. Okay, and we do exercises for that. Grab your biceps with your fingertips, grab the muscle, bounce up and down. Can you feel the weight on the biceps? Mm -hmm. Yeah. People say, how do you build up a bicep solar sizing? I say, put weight on it. Yeah, but how do you do a solar sizing? Balance. It's weight bearing. It's on every single cell. I want you to get this. Okay, now take your hand, take them around your waist, dig into the stomach muscles with your fingertips. Squeeze those muscles. I get past it. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> I gotta get past my wife's yeah. food. <laughs> dig, dig into those muscles. Can you feel them flexing? Yes, I can. Yeah, you can't. You're doing over 100 sit-ups a minute. At the same time, you're still doing over 100 of these things. You're doing over 100 of these things. You're giving yourself a facial. All the facial muscles have weight on them, so they have to become more resistant to the weight. When they get weak, everything falls. When you put, as you move up and down, your internal organs are moving up and down, and the connective tissue starts to firm up to become more resistant. When they some boxers, do a lot of chip probing. And you're not favoring one side of the body over the other, are you? No, I'm not. Now, what we're going to demonstrate, I want you to think of how it would improve a golf swing. How it would improve a baseball swing? How would it would improve somebody who's on the line in front of you in football? And they've got all these imbalances, which 99% of everybody has in class, and all of a sudden you come up and you don't. What is that going to do? Watch this. Let's get a step down. You know, he's a wrestling coach. Oh, oh, oh I, okay, listen. True story. I took, I, I, I will. I took a wrestler in Manti High School, What's the um, Bradley, Bradley, and this was a few years ago, and I had him train on the solo side. He went on to win state. Yeah. How do you throw a, a totally balanced person off when you have all the imbalances inside of you? Thank you. This is a secret weapon. Watch, watch. Okay, take wrestling. Go ahead, spread the feet apart, bend the knee again, take the same position. Okay, you're on there for a few minutes. All right. I'm going to try just like I did last time. You're going to tell us if you notice any difference at all in your strength and balance. Okay, ready? Resist. 
I didn't move forward. Not at all. Let's go about it. You're about to do it again. You're about to do it again. Try it. 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 He's stronger, he's more balanced. What, is that gonna, what effect is that going to have on an internal organ function and how do you feel? You're going to feel more balanced too. Your body's more balanced. <coughs> also, he's with baby balance too, right? Uh -huh. Right, exactly. He opened up the energy flow, the circulation, and his whole body was expanding and contracting together, collectively. So it becomes balanced collectively. But it's not strong yet because he hasn't been doing it every day. And we need to change that. So watch this, because I'm going to do it right alongside with you. All right. Dame, let's uh, stand here. Can somebody measure for 20 seconds? Say when. <laughs> Tony, ready? Oh, are we? Cool. OK. Jump with me. Jump. OK, keep going. This illustrates what a typical aerobic impact sport does. When you hit a hard surface, you shatter your nervous system, your muscles tense up, and it automatically exposes all your imbalances again. Which makes you weak. Okay, now, Dana wants you to take the same position again. Okay. And now I'm going to fall on my face. <laughs> <laughs> Hold those elbows in. I'm going to push down again. I want you to do it just like you did last time. See if there's any difference. Ready? Resist. I'm pushing straight down. Up is it. Okay, coming forward. Do it again. Ready? Okay. Try as hard as you can. Resist. That's good. Okay, you feel the difference? Up and over. Come on back. Don't Okay. First of all, do it on me. Now, here's the difference. Just go ahead and push down my hands. Go ahead. <laughs> go ahead. Go ahead. Bring it on. Yeah. Totally balanced. That's, that's an advantage. I do it every day, and I've been doing it. You do it for three months, where you're, you're constantly challenging your body in a balanced state, and it's getting stronger in a balanced state. Then you can hit a hard surface. It doesn't matter. Wow. You're still strong because you've exercised in a balanced state. Come on back up on the supple side. And I'm going to answer any quick questions like, you know. Yes? I was wondering, what was the weight limit again? 300 pounds under warranty, although we've got brand new units right now. We're going to up that because we just, we've got seven rolls of four-ply polyester stitching around the, the rim, and now we just cross-stitch each one of those tabs that hold on to it. So, Dennis, somebody's over 300 pounds is not going to be jumping up and down high. Okay, what we want to do is start working on the thighs and the knees. So we build up the knee so that we can use the thighs so we can lose the weight faster. And, and that's a process. And we built, we, Dennis Miko lost 98 pounds in six months. Joan Galbacini, who's part of Q Sciences, lost 90 pounds in about nine months. Um, Mike Thompson, some of you may know him, is an attorney state legislator here in Utah, lost 65 pounds in six months. Yes, great question. All of the oxygen blood flow is going to the brain. You're getting all this movement up and down. Plus, with most people, the brain is loose up there. It solves just like everything else does. And you move up and down, the brain moves up and down. So if you do, don't jump high when you first, it takes two to three weeks to build up to that. Um, because too much weight. And, but as those connective tissues firm up, you won't even notice that. Yes? What about with um, vertigo and yes. heights and feeling like it really Yeah. Imbalanced. I have never known no. one of our customers who is celibacized for a month who has vertigo, have the symptoms of vertigo oh. after they've been celibacized. I have not known of any of them. <laughs> I've had many of them call me up and say, as long as they're celibacized, they don't have any symptoms of it. And they do think they have the navel cubicle. So moving up and down challenges the stipular mm -hmm. balance and moves through the path of stare at the smallest one of our ear representing our vestibular balance, plus it increases the oxygen growth from the brain and challenges our proprioceptors. People that have had a stroke, they have to retrain the brain. How do you do that? Get on the solar cycle. That's what babies did when they first started off. It starts with, check with your doctor. I always say, 
check with your doctor or have your doctor give me a call. And I can share with them many of the different techniques and they can determine which one would be most appropriate. And I can work with them on. Yes? Um, I have a couple of questions. You mentioned almost all parts of the body except for the, under the arms. Under the How arms. How do you get under the Oh, here, the back? <laughs> good question. Um, let's step back down. I mean, you're enjoying I mean, it's a good one. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> let's, let's, let me go ahead and take the same position. I'm like, I want Dean to know I'm not going to leave him in that space. All right. <laughs> okay. And you try just as hard as you can again. And this isn't kinesiology. This is strength and balance, literal. Okay. Ready? Hip resist. Does I push down? Or does I pull forward? You know, you're you totally balanced. You feel that? Yeah. Thank you. Very much so. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Yes. You were talking about uh, knee injuries, like working the knees. I limped for 15 years because of damage on my left foot. So my right leg has really been the hard work, the workhorse. Okay. So I don't limp the uh -huh. same, but I've had trouble with my right knee. So uh -huh. once I check with my physician, yeah. could they write me a prescription for that for my flex bone? There are doctors that are doing that. I don't know what code that they're putting it under, but they are doing it. and. Gonna, That's the goal for us. For us. Show us how we work with that. Sure. I really you bet. Tony, don't yeah. get, don't get the arms yeah. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. So let's talk about the arms. Okay. No, no. That's good. All right. This is one that I do. Okay. It's um, if you take an isometric, which puts weight on the body, and then you increase it with an isotonic, it's going to make it bigger and stronger. So on this one, I do for about a minute, and you'll, I guarantee you, you will feel this within a minute. As you're bouncing up and down, just push down and pull up. Push down and resist the whole time. In a minute, you're going to be burning. I don't care how strong you are because you're using your own strength and now you're going to increase it. And you're not tearing it down to do it. You can take, and this is in the DVD. We have a DVD that will help you sell these if you're interested. If you want to build a business around this and help us take this out to the public, do you know anybody that has knee problems? Or hip problems, or back problems, or digestion, elimination problems, weight loss issues, balance, shoulder, stress, have a hard time sleeping. I had a lady in, um, I was at the uh, Natural Health Federation in Pasadena, California. I taught this movement. Have you ever noticed a baby when a baby is stressy? <laughs> when a baby is stressed, they're stressy, fussy, <laughs> comes out stressy. <laughs> That you'll see a parent take a baby, put them over their shoulder, and what do they do? They gently bounce their What does the baby do? Are we too big to be put over somebody's shoulder? <laughs> but we can go on a solo side and put our fingertips straight down, gently move up and down, all do this at night time, until you feel the pressure at the tips of your finger, and then just relax. Just gently move up and down. It's a massage. It really is so relaxing. There's so much more we can do on a solo side. Are you asked for the knee? Yes, the knee. Sorry. Spread the feet apart. No, I knew there was one I was missing. Okay, spread the feet apart a little bit. You bend the knee slightly. Okay. Just rock to begin okay. left to right because it puts weight on the knee and takes it off. Weight on, off, and it's working both sides of the knee and the hips at the same time. Your knees are slightly bent, but, it, but you can control the amount of weight. Now, as you get stronger, instead of rocking left to right, keep your hips straight ahead and walk just like this. As you get stronger still, you can sit down further. And that puts more weight or stress on the, on the knees. So you can, you know, it's probably up to you. Um, and then, of course, you can do eventually you build up to those. So it's graduated movements that are designed to help restructure and strengthen. That's how Robert Jan won. Um, so then, have you been able to be successful in taking this into physical therapy or yes. orthopedic? Oh, yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. Thank yeah, you. absolutely. And chiropractors as well. Chiropractors make an adjustment the muscles are not used to a new alignment. They're constantly fighting against the muscles. So you get an adjustment with a chiropractor. The chiropractors we use will have them get on the side of the gently move up and down the muscle flexor on the new alignment. So at yes. the end of the alignment, then you have them do that movement. Yes. Thank you. Exactly. Any other questions I can answer? <laughs> yes. I you had mentioned earlier something about the thyroid, and out of all my research that I've done, I truly believe there is literally a healing cure for everything, but I have never, ever found anyone that has ever said you can cure the thyroid. And I am on the thyroid, and I want to go off. Yeah. Suzanne Rice, I want to thank you 
capitalization to all of you as a solar size company. Because I have so much more energy and feel so much better after investing in the solar size trampoline and using it faithfully every day. I have been on Synth Right for 22 years and have done a lot of different things, but none have made a difference with my thyroid. However, recently I have been able to lower my dose of Synth Right and I put it down to the solar size since it's the only change that I've made in recent months. Thank you all so much. And a special thank you for my Hey, Davis, I'm going to mention the will call is going to be open for a little bit if anybody wants to get a seller size or any other product. How many would then consider can working? Questions, how many would consider becoming part of the seller size family? Anybody? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. All right. Um, and you the difference between the two models? Like, is there a you bet. Um, okay, on the half full of seller sizes, you know, when you get this, it's, it's, a, it's a one time investment for a lifetime investment. I want you, if you have any hesitation, please come up and read some of these testimonials. These are not mine. I mean, these are, these are just, they weren't solicited. They're just people that have written in. They cannot believe the changes in their health and in their body. How many years have you used this one, David? This one's probably about eight, nine years old. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe, maybe a little more older than that. I gotta find out. Um, the legs fold over. You run the half fold home base unit. And, oh, I got one more thing I gotta show you. We have, just so you know, what we're up against. <laughs> the fitness industry doesn't particularly like this because it literally is a gets rid of all their equipment. Well, it it really does, and and. There's nothing wrong with doing weightlifting and all these different things. It's more of a sport than it is for health. And you can do it if you want. There's nothing wrong with it. Incorporate some size to get faster results. But there's a company on the uh, internet that actually took some lemon, put it on both ends of each spring, lemon juice, put it on uh, YouTube. And so you guys, I'm going to, you can, I'm going to sick you after. Okay. <laughs> And they, they, they show how squeaky the, the unit is. Squeak, squeak, squeak with the lemon juice. I know that because it was one of their employees who doesn't work with them anymore, but called us up to tell us about it. <laughs> but I want you to listen to it. And I have not oiled this unit in a number of years. What ends up happening is they'll squeak a little bit initially, put a drop of oil at both ends of each spring. Not the spring itself, it doesn't squeak. It's just where it rubs against steel. And then it starts to wear in, and it becomes like a soft slipper, which is why I've had people ask to buy this. But how squeaky is that? It's not very squeaky at all. I can I can oil it, but but you should you should see what they do. I mean, it's, what kind of oil do you recommend? I use three in one. It's the easiest essential oil is good too. Yeah. All right. So we've got the half full solar sizer. This is a professional trifold. Okay, thank you. You bet. The half fold looks like this. It fits into a carrying case you hold over your shoulder. It's still portable if you want to take it with you. The trifold just pulls in the thirds. So it fits into the carrying case that has the wheels and a pull out handle, so it's a lot easier to demonstrate with. And, the, and you've been able to take that on plane? Yes. Carry on? Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, if it's a small commuter plane, I still take it on. I just check it into the bulkhead like people do with the strollers. Yes? One other question before you enter. I do have one of those at home, mm -hmm. and I'm trying to figure out how to put it down. Oh, the half fold? The, the part, yeah, where you just do it, the half fold. So that, yeah. that part in particular, I can't do. Let me show you. It's real simple. It's, mm -hmm. on the, it's on the DVD, too. If you look at the end of the DVD, it'll show you how to do it. But, <coughs> all right. This is how I do this. And, and we show it on, on our website, too. But this is where it folds in half. I just kneel down and I put my knee right next to the frame here to hold it down. That's after I lift the legs up. Hold the legs over. Then I put my knee right next to the hinge. I reach down right here with my knee holding it here. I just lift it up. Okay. Lift it up. So much easier than what my husband was doing. What was he doing? <laughs> Popping it or dropping it? Or? No, he was like holding it up for that kind of punch. Yeah, it yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, I've heard people doing things like that, but I've never done that. <laughs> anybody else? Any other questions? Well, I want to thank you all. Um, anybody want to know how much they are? Sure. Okay. 
Um, well, I sold this one here originally with 579, and it's, it, and then we took down to 499, and now it's going back up to 520. Um, this particular unit comes with a seller sizer, the carrying case, a balance bar that fits into the carrying case. It comes with a book, a DVD, a book, and an exercise chart. It's available through Q Sciences for 450. Yeah. And the half old unit, if we sell it for 399, that's going up this next month. But for Q Sciences, it's 350. That's what that is. All right. So when are you picking out the ones that are like the furniture for the bathroom so the kids? You won't be able to keep them off it. Yeah, they will. They'll love it. Children, people that have ADD, um, people that have got. Uh, okay. I suggest one last comment. This is it, and then I'm going to turn the time back over to James. Thank you. You've been very gracious. I appreciate it very much. Um, if your body could communicate with you in a language that we understood. I suggest you'd wake up every morning, walk into the bathroom, look in front of the mirror, and on your forehead it would read, please shake well before using. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much. You can tell why we're excited to have something like this, because you know what? Not only do you have get the proper nutrition, the proper elements that we need for our body, but then you turn around and put, ha put uh, exercise with it, and that's a great mixture for happiness. A good way to relieve stress, a good way to make us uh, in a better position. So thank you, David, very much. And thank you, Tony, for, for coming out with the, the formulation that we needed to, to truly touch people's lives. So thank you both. We're going to go ahead and end it up here. They're here to answer any questions you have, if you have questions. And rather than that, again, we just thank you. Have a great night. The, the people are there at IBO Success if you would like to pick up one. And we are going to be doing this every Wednesday. So please, you know, I would invite you to invite others to come back. What better way to explain how the seller sizer works than to hear it from David himself? Now, this is a blessing that we had Tony here tonight. And I wish you could come every week. But I know Tony's going to be up in Canada. But invite, come back next week. If everyone brought one person back, this room would be packed. And we're also grateful to have Barbara. Because we know that with Tony, they are, as you say, they are a team and they're always wonderful together. So, all right, guys, have a great night. Ideal success with them. Wonderful. You great, literally, great for me. You know, doctors, health practitioners, people who are in sports, people like to play golf. Bring them.